If you just got yourself a brand new dash cam and are wondering, do I really need to use this thing to power it? I really don't want to tie up my cigarette lighter port on my vehicle, and I also don't want to hardwire the dash cam to my car. Is there a better and easier option out there? Well, I actually found one, and that is this little guy, which is called a power mirror adapter, and I'll place a link to the adapter in the description down below in case you need to get one. Most cars have power going to the rear view mirror to power things like the map lights, the compass, or auto dimming. And with this power mirror adapter, we can tap into that power going to the mirror and use that power to power our dash cam. This frees up my cigarette lighter port, and it also means that I don't have to deal with installing a hardware kit. And to install this adapter, I'm gonna unplug the existing cable that is going to the back of my rear view mirror. Typically, there is a latch that I can push to release the connector, and then I can pull back to separate it. Now I can connect the power adapter into the rear view mirror until it fully seats and locks in place. Finally, I can connect my original mirror cable into the power adapter. And we are now ready to power our dash cam. And the mirror adapter comes with a shorty cable Cable, which I can then use to connect it to my dash cam. And one of the big advantages of this power setup is that it eliminates the issue encounter when running cable along the trim of the car and that is potentially running into a live airbag. Installing a cable over a live airbag does take a certain level of bravery, and also leaving a cable installed over the airbag can potentially cause an issue with the deployment in case I were to be involved in a car crash. And I have made another video where I covered this in more detail. If you wanna see that, I'll put a link to it in the description down below. But with the power mirror adapter, I don't have to worry about putting cables over an airbag since the power adapter is right smack in the middle of the windshield and it also because it's in the middle of the windshield it places the dash cam in an optimal position high and right in the middle of the windshield so we can get the best possible view of the road but there's a couple of important things to know regarding dash cam and using this power mirror adapter dash cams have different size power connectors so the power mirror adapter includes three different shorty cables so we can choose the one that fits our dash cam we get one usb-c cable we also get one mini USB cable and finally we also get a micro USB cable. The second thing to know is that dash cams have different power requirements. This adapter was designed to supply around 2 amps of current which is more than enough to power most dash cams but if you're using something larger like a mirror dash cam those typically require about 3 amps of power which exceeds the 2 amps of power that this adapter was designed for which means it will not have enough power to drive a mirror dash cam. But the good thing, as I mentioned before, most dash cams typically require less than two amps of power. However, if you wanted to double check the power requirement of your dash cam, you can find that directly on the dash cam or in the instruction manual for the dash cam or in the power adapter that came with your dash cam. It may also be possible to use this adapter to power other devices that use a USB connector for power. The main limitation is gonna be the power requirement. If the device you're looking to use uses less than two amps, you'll probably be okay. If the device you're looking to power exceeds the two amps capacity of this adapter, it is likely not going to work. But let's also talk about parking mode. This mirror adapter is similar to using a cigarette lighter plug in the sense that it will not activate parking mode on most dash cams like a hardwire kit does. Typically, power to the mirror of the car is only provided when the car is running, which means that when the car is on, the adapter is gonna get power. And when the car is off, the adapter is not gonna get power. So you can think of it in this way. When the car is running, the dash cam is going to turn on and begin recording. And when the car is turned off, the dash cam will turn off and stop recording. That being said, it may be possible to use the power mirror adapter to monitor our car when it is parked. Now, this is going to depend on your vehicle as some cars do have the ability to provide power to the mirror even when the car is off 
And in that case, the power adapter is gonna stay on, which means the dash cam is gonna stay on and we'll be able to record when we are parked and we're away from the vehicle. In the case that your mirror supplies power to the adapter all the time, even when it's off, that means that the dash cam is gonna consume power when the car is off and if left long enough on pulling power from the car's battery, it is possible that we can drain the battery and find ourselves stranded. So here's my recommendation on what settings to use to reduce the possibility of draining your car's battery while still being able to monitor it. Most dash cams typically have a screensaver feature where the screen can turn off, but the dash cam will continue to record. If your dash cam has such a feature, I recommend turning that on because that is gonna turn off the screen and therefore is gonna reduce the amount of power that the dash cam is gonna consume. The second feature you want to look for is resolution and bit rate. While recording in 4K can provide very clean and crisp images, 4K recording requires a lot of power. So consider changing the resolution to something lower because lower resolutions consume a lot less power. Same with bit rate. If your dash cam allows you to adjust the bit rate, having a high bit rate setting will give you really crisp video at the expense of consuming more power. Lowering the bit rate can potentially reduce the amount of power that the dash cam consumes while still providing a good image. And the third feature you wanna look for is the G sensor setting. If the G sensor setting is set too high, the dash cam screen is gonna turn on every time that the dash cam thinks that your car was impacted. And remember, every time that the screen is on, it is consuming more power. Now, normally it is a good thing. We want the dash cam to turn on and record that instance when somebody impacted the car. But if the setting is too high, then we may potentially just be capturing false events, false impacts where no impact actually took place. Perhaps a car with a loud exhaust passed by and that triggered the G sensor of the dash cam to think that your car got impacted. So you can potentially end up with a lot of false impacts if the G sensor setting is set too high. The next feature you wanna check for is motion detection. And this feature is kind of rare, but if your dash cam has motion detection, consider turning that on because that allows the dash cam to only record when it sees movement. This can dramatically, again, reduce power consumption because now the dash cam is not on recording when nothing is happening. It's only gonna record when there is movement nearby the car, which is typically when there's gonna be potentially somebody or something impacting the vehicle. And one last feature that you wanna check for is time lapse. Since the car is gonna record many hours when parked, those many hours can be compressed into a smaller video, which is called a time lapse. And time lapse uses a lot less power than normal recording. But also time lapse will allow you to fit a lot more in terms of time, in terms of hours, into the memory card of your dash cam as compared to normal recording. And my final recommendation is regarding the installation of the mirror power adapter. While I was able to install this adapter just like you saw on this video with the car off, but with the battery is still connected, normally it is recommended to disconnect the battery before working on a vehicle for safety reasons. Also on some vehicles, disconnecting the mirror harness when the battery is still connected can potentially throw an error. And while this is a rare occurrence, the best way to avoid this is just to disconnect the vehicle's battery before installing the mirror power adapter. And once this little guy is installed, reconnecting the battery of the car once again. So remember, I place links in the description down below to this mirror power adapter. There are several versions of it for different car models available, including a universal version of it. And if you guys have any other questions regarding this, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, make sure you hit that like button to support the channel and stay tuned as I have a lot more cool car product reviews coming up for you guys. Thank you guys for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one.